Right, it's up to you, okay? Who's responsible for your life? I am. Girl, you are. Only you can make decisions for yourself. So we have to make the right decisions going forward in our lives. So uh, let's set it off, okay? We like to get things going, your mind going. Who is this character right here? Who is that? The Energizer Bunny. What is the Energizer Bunny known for? How did he become? How did it become it famous? Going going. It keeps going and going and going. But what does that do with being a Christian? You gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. But there are some things we have to stop. There's some things, right? So there's some things as Christians, right? Like keep going out. Uh, okay, I'm one way, then I'm another way. But there's some things that we're gonna be honest. We need to stop. Like even myself. Like I'm very reflective. Like I can't come here before I have to deal with some things myself. Like I have to eat and deal and reflect. Okay, what is it then? What we? Some things we have to stop. All right. So here's the old school commercial because this might be before some time when some people don't recognize. She's like, who's in the book? So here's the commercial. All right, this is a, this is classic commercial. Here. What he does? I'm trying to get the hound dogs. There you go. Train dogs. Okay. It keeps going and, and going. There he is. Energizer. Absolutely nothing lasts longer. City going. Just like that. Anybody said we tried to stop something? Like for 18 years I've been trying to put it down. For seven years I've been trying to stop. For so long I've been trying to stop. I've been eating meat all my life and now it's time to stop. And we, some things, we fire out, remember, we get like, the people, well, I can't blow horn anymore, the dogs start running, but the sin tends to keep on just do, 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 do. It's beating you upside the head, just tearing you up, okay? So, uh, as Christian, we're looking at it this way, okay? First John, chapter 3, 5, and 6, this is something really kind of, you got to really sit there and be like, hmm, you have a Keely moment, you have a funeral moment, you have a, a R.I.H. moment. You know, heaven is the only place you can go. When they say R.I.H. They used to say rest in peace, now they say R.I.H. Right? They will upgrade it. The rest of heaven. And you put a little cloud and the angels. Heaven is the only place you can go when it's all the age. I'd like to paint this for the picture for everybody we know. Like, you know what they, what do you say? I think they just leave that open. Well, everybody wants you to think that everybody is going to go to heaven, right? Because people don't put R.I.H. in flames. <laughs> you know? I just see them graphic on Facebook, like a little pitchfork, and like, rest in hell. <laughs> you know, you don't see that. It's like R.I.H. and little angels, and it's blue and clouds and fluffy. You want to have a positive. Thinking, although you want to have this positive mindset, you realize, like, this really wasn't the greatest guy or the greatest young lady. But we always want everybody to work out and have everybody after him, right? But here's what the word of God says. First chapter, first John, uh, chapter three, five, and six. Easy to read version, okay? Uh, you know that Christ came to take away people's sins. There is no sin in Christ. That's good stuff right there, right? We're gonna write that down. So whoever lives in Christ, are we the ones living in Christ as Christians? So talking about us people here, talking about the people who are in bed, the Christians in bed, the people who who, who believe in Jesus Christ? Whoever lives in Christ does not continue. We know continue like the bunny. Keep going and going and going to sin. If they continue to sin, this is what kind of catches me. This is one of my favorite scriptures. They have never really understood Christ and have never known him. And when I know brother one of his, he's shared before, you know, Jesus Christ will be like, depart from me, you evildoer, I never, I don't even know you. You know, we think a lot of people, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven. And Jesus Christ will be like, I don't know you. <laughs> you want a t-shirt, you went to the church to put your life bill, I mean, you went there to get food, you did all this kind of great stuff. When it comes to having a genuine relationship with me, Sorry. So go R H. That's the other. <laughs> I don't know you. And it's that if we this is I'm saying you read just read the scripture. If you kinda like me, like, oh you said I just keep on doing something I'm not supposed to do. I'm like, we don't know Jesus right here. 
<laughs> I didn't say it. This is what it says. So whoever lives in Christ, anybody lives in Christ, all the Christians, you, you accept Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, who lives in Christ does not. We should not be continuing to sin. If they, so if we, all those people who just raised our hands, the ones who didn't raise their hand, but you still want to say you live in Jesus Christ. All right. If we continue to sin, they have never really understood Christ, and we don't even know him. So we take communion, we come to church, we dress up, we go, we do this stuff, but we don't even know Jesus Christ because we have like a, just this, this kind of cordial relationship, just at a distance. We're acquaintances. We know of Jesus Christ. We come down to just really, really knowing him, then really having like this, this inside, outside kind of effect on our lives. It really doesn't happen. So the key thing in this verse here is it says, you know that Christ came. So it's this whole concept. We know things, right? We know what sin is, don't we? It, it is so easy, like, um, and if you have a spiritual conscience, like, I know I shouldn't be doing this, I know I shouldn't be doing that. We already know, that's the crazy part about it. But then you some of the reading scripture, it's saying there that Christ came to take away people's sins. So the question kind of, are my sins really gone? And how does it take place? How do you think your sins are already gone, but you still keep, we keep still sin? How are they gone? From repentance, right? That's one way. But the other way is thinking about it. We have this graph here saying we have the very mind of Christ, meaning that instead of thinking on our old carnal mind that tells us I have to do this, I have to say that, I have to look a certain way, I have to eat, I have to feel a certain way, we are told in Scripture that once we accept Jesus Christ, we have that new mindset, the mind of Christ. All right. Other than that, our sin is taken away because we should be led by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will not lead you to do anything that is not of God. That doesn't make sense. How can God's spirit lead you to do something that is not... How does God's spirit lead you to do something that is against itself? God's spirit ain't telling you to do the stuff that a lot of us were doing. God's spirit is like wondering, you want to God, how can I be in a situation? You love me, but I'm struggling. You're not listening to the spirit. There's not a single father or mother who loves their children who's going to make go and tell you to do stuff that bring you harm. I'm gonna tell you, like my children go to the outlets, they like to run around on the planet, have to jump and skip. I like to sit down somewhere, walk, before you hurt yourself and you bust your head. I'm gonna say, go jump off the planet and go turn car wheels and go run into people. So we trying to go, you know, they fall, hurt themselves, we rush into the break room. It don't work like that, okay? So we should be led, we already know better. Going forward here, we're going to look at a Christian litmus test. Looking for graphics, I love running into this right here for stop. So when you think about stop, stop, think, observe, and then you proceed, okay? A litmus test is when you really test the quality or purity of something. So if we would take your diamond ring, everybody with a diamond ring, we're going to take it and test it for a litmus test to see if it's genuine. We're going to take your goal. We're going to see if it's really genuine. We're going to take you as a Christian. We're going to take uh, you. Who we want to take? We're going to take myself. All right? And nobody knows what I do except me, really. Okay? And we're going to take my actions and put them against the limits test, which is the Bible. It says that line up. And then you see, if I'm really still doing stuff I know I shouldn't do, I'm continuing to sin, I never knew Christ. So we want to see if we have a genuine, or a genuine Christian, and there has to be a stopping point if we really want to say, I know Jesus Christ. Because if we continue to sin, what does that mean? We never really understood Jesus Christ. At what point are you going to say, all right, I've done enough? That's enough of whatever that sin is. I'm not going to name sin or call it by. No, but just that is enough of doing what I know ain't right. Come on. Like, okay, I've had fun for the past year. This was a great relationship. I've had fun. This is whatever. Hey, I didn't get caught. We didn't get caught. Okay, I did this. I did that. Hey, it happened. I can't cry over what happened in the past. But at this point, hey, it's over. Because I could die the next minute. I don't want to die, and as being said according to scripture, I never knew. I really never knew Christ. I don't want to die and get to see Jesus Christ, and then be like, "Hey, Jesus, what's up, homie? You, you gonna let me in, right?" <laughs> but I mean, Jesus, I did this, I did that. I mean, you know, Jesus, you acting too fast. No, you are too fast. 
You are the two-faced one. You love the Lord one second, and if you're not in the church, you just love your own self. Come on. You love your flesh. You love the sense of pride. You love people telling who you are and how great you are. You love that feeling. But who would have really said, I know Jesus Christ, and to say Jesus Christ knows you, it's like on Facebook. People send you friend requests, but they have to accept it. I would send Jesus Christ a friend request. I want to accept it because I see your character. I see what you're doing. I see that what you're doing lies with my word and my will. So you're my friend. So you can look at my pictures. You can spread my glory. You can spread my blessing. You can get all the great stuff that I have going on because you truly are my friend. You truly are doing the things that I ask you to do. Because we do not want to put on just a show for the world. Because the world cannot put you in heaven, but the world can certainly put you in hell. They can put on a program, they can put on a graphic, they can do this, but just because they say it don't mean you're going there, but the things that the world does can definitely lead you to hell. When all they sell, we went shopping for clothes, and like when they sell shorts where the pockets are longer than the shorts? Hello? <laughs> Let's go lead somebody to hell. Alright? You go on your phone or your computer, you can pull up anything in the world, and then you go, it's just crazy. The world is going to lead you to hell. So we're going to the show, okay? We have to have a stopping point. Like, we talked about this movie about, we watched a documentary, what the hell? When I saw this movie, I came to a stopping point. I said, I can no longer eat meat like that. I can't do it. I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a little clip. And it's not trying to convince you why, but it's just like a teaching point, like, oh, meat is gonna kill me. Meat is gonna cause diabetes. Meat is gonna cause my blood pressure to get. So I'm done. That's it, I'm stopping. Here's a clip. This is a stopping point. And go back, and we gotta see this, okay? This is this is a documentary. Why did Dr. Ratner, the chief medical officer of the American Diabetes Association, not want to talk about diet, but the fact that he had such an emotional reaction to my question made it feel I was digging into something that he didn't want to cover. I had always thought there was no prevention for type 1 diabetes, but then I did research and came across countless studies referencing the link between exposure to dairy at a young age and type 1 diabetes. Uh, this is a food made for baby cows. Cow milk protein gets into the bloodstream. The body says, hey, this isn't supposed to be in the bloodstream. It makes antibodies to the cow milk protein, which then attack the pancreas and destroy the pancreas. How is this possible that ADA wouldn't have this forefront on their website? Why wouldn't they be warning all parents about this, even if there are only a slight chance? Why are they recommending people to actually eat these foods linked to diabetes? It seemed all of the large health organizations were encouraging people to eat the very foods linked to the diseases they're supposed to be fighting against. American Heart Association promoting beef, American Cancer Society promoting processed meat, pink ribbons on dairy products, and bacon-wrapped shrimp on American Diabetes Association. And then it all came together. What if? Right, and when he pulls us up, you find out that all these people are the beef company, the pork company, the chicken company, the crab, they're, they are supporting all this. They're giving them tons of millions and billions of dollars so we can eat all this stuff, so we can die and get prescription medicine. This is real talk. It's real talk. People do not want you to be healthy or cured. They want you to go to the doctor, stay in blood pressure medicine, stay in insulin shots, stay on this, stay on that, stay on all that stuff, so you can spend a million dollars for the rest of your life, never getting well. Just keep eating the meat, though. Keep drinking the dairy. You know, I'm sitting there, I'm my mouth like this, watching. Like, you know, I can't, I can't eat ice cream anymore. <laughs> he said, I can't eat, eat my turkey. No more Chick Fil A. But at this point, it's a point of knowing, right? Now I know this, well, I have a choice to make. We all have a choice to make, and the scripture is very clear. So, my dear children, don't let anyone divert you from the truth. It's the person who acts right, who is right. Just as we see lived out in our rights of Messiah. There can be actions and there can be words. This comes from the message in the next verse. It says, don't let anyone fool you. The company like to fool you. The pink ribbon, they all know. Like, don't yo play yoga, it's you just killing yourself. These people are sponsoring, they're putting money into this stuff so you can just make them rich. 
the pharmaceutical company is just trillions of dollars they made every year. The GDP, the global economy, all that great stuff, what we just want to imagine is insane. So yeah, they have a stopping point. And here's what it is, our actions speak louder than words. We can say we're doing something, but it is what we actually do. The one who actually acts right is right, just as we see it lived out in our Messiah, Jesus Christ. So we have to be very, very careful. And going forward, we have to we have to come to a point where we make a decision. It is, it is a it's like a decision day. I know for a recruiter, you know, a lot of young men they going to play football, basketball. They have to make a decision on National Signing Day, right? It is your National Signing Day. It is your lucky day to be here because just the word of God said. I uh, saw the Chris Martin last night. He said, "There you go, your day to boom." One of our favorite scriptures, First uh, Kings eighteen twenty one. It's how long, in another words, shall you halt between two opinions? I saw that video, I asked it, I started eating meat except fish on uh, Friday. It's been a rough weekend. I've been eating vegetables, it's been taking me 30 minutes to eat, I've been eating a lot of fiber and taking vitamins. It's just like, okay, can you smoke peanut butter crackers? I mean, it's been rough, but it's just a matter of saying, that's it. I know better. I know better. I'm gonna stop like Carter, he, he stops taking his medicine, Chris will get her blood pressure pill. It, it's just gonna be a drastic change. But here it is. Elijah challenges the people. How long are you going to sit on the fence? How long are you going to say, I love the Lord? He heard my cry. I got the t-shirt, I'm being the light, Tina, you know? I'm being the light. But then when it's truly said and done, your actions are speaking so much louder than your words. Amen. Your actions are saying, I don't understand a thing about the scripture. I don't know you, Jesus, and you certainly don't know me. We just pretend like we pray like, oh yeah, yeah, I know him by association. Oh yeah, 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 I know him. How long are you going to sit on the fence? If God is a real God, then follow him. If you really going to say, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ, I'm going to be a Christian, I'm going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, then follow him. If not, but if not, if it's better, follow him. But what we want you to do is just to make up your mind. Okay? Revelation 3, some of another Robert going scripture. You have to be hot or cold. Because when Jesus Christ puts you in your mouth and you're lukewarm, who likes to take a lukewarm bath? A lukewarm shower? Nobody. He's gonna spit you out. He's saying you're detestable, you're gross, you need to, you have to be either for God. Or against God. It's just that simple. But here's what he said, because this is like even thousands of years ago, it's just like today. Look what it says. Nobody said a word. <laughs> Nobody made a move. People are just like, I hear you, but that's it. It's kind of going in one ear and out the other. Nobody decided to change their lives. Nobody. Not at so. What we want to do here is keep it personal. What do I as an individual need to stop? Can anybody ask this, answer this question for you except you? Not your spouse, not your boyfriend, not your girlfriend, not your children, not me. I don't know. You know in your heart because you know better because there's something that the Spirit tells you like, hey, hey, don't go there, don't do that, don't call him, don't call her. Don't pull up that website, don't do that, don't go there, don't do I me, mean, whatever it is, don't go open that cabinet. There's not a somewhere. The spirit should be like, come on, come on back home. You know what that is, you need to stop. You know what it is that's gonna keep you from being Jesus. Hey, we like, mm -mm. I listen, listen. We don't come here just to feel good about ourselves. We come here as we see everybody together. Like we are assembly of believers here on earth in this little bitty building. We're going to be an assembly of believers in heaven together, worshiping God forever. But He can reign forever. We want to spread this, this knowledge to everybody. So they can joke Tina on Facebook and clown and this. They can do what they want to do. But we're still here going to continue to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you want to join us for the ones who are really serious about stopping, because we're not going to tell you, fool yourself now. I, Mr. C, I pity the fool. If you think you can fool people, you can fool me. You can fool 
family and friends, but you're not fooling Jesus. Just know that. Just, just know that is a fact. So what do you need to stop? And just think about that for a second. As, as we prepare this, let's come with a simple little table, something you can just say in your mind. We, we, we concerned paper and pens, but just in your mind, think about it. What are you currently struggling with? That's one column. There is a situation or situations you need to stop. In the next column, I want you to think about the expected outcome. Say to yourself, we look at trajectory a lot. We look at data a lot in, in the industry, education. What is the data going to show us? What do you expect to happen to you if you continue that sin? We had a situation before where we said, if you give a mouse a cookie, right? Y'all remember that? You know, but if you continue to do whatever it is you do, what you're doing, that you need to stop. We know ultimately the, the ultimate outcome is hell. Because the scripture just said you continue to sin, and you know not to sin, you never knew Jesus Christ. That's kind of like, oh, well, I need to really give myself a check. What do we all do? We all said that no sin is greater than other, no one's perfect. We all. Everybody in here has something they need to put in these boxes. Come on. That's it. Ain't nobody holding the gun, nobody judging. It's just a matter of every one of us who are born of a mother, who are carnal and born of the sin, who are influenced by this world, there is something that we currently have a struggle with, something that we need to stop. And the expected outcome, if we don't do anything about it, is we're going to go to hell. Doom and gloom, whatever, but it is what it is. Okay? We're going to go to hell. But then the situation is, now, what is the solution to that? As you prepare to walk out of here, as you prepare to do make sure that you don't just leave without thinking about what that solution is. We know we can obviously pray about it. We can read our scripture. You can get a buddy to call, a pure buddy. Like, hey, I'm really struggling. Can you help me make sure I don't do this? I'm tempted to do this. I need, I need you to support me. I need some scriptures. Let people go. Cut them off. Get rid of stuff. Like, I cannot go eat turkey burgers right now because they're not in my house. I'm not driving a burger in the blues to get one. It comes to time you I'm cutting it off. That's it. I'm not going back. I'm done with it. Finished. When I delete that number, I'm not going to write it down somewhere else and go add it back in my phone. I'm not. Because we have to understand the expected outcome. Are you going to play around your soul? For what? What's more important in your soul? Anybody. I'm going to wait. But it, that's your soul. There is nothing on earth that Satan can offer you. It's more important. I don't care how fine he is, how fine she is, how good it makes you feel, what they say, whatever. Your soul, really? Hell, man. Y'all, 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 they gangster. Y'all, they hard. <laughs> y'all, y'all, oh, I can make it to hell. Some of y'all can't make it in them rubber wood. <laughs> I uh, go to North End, uh, uh, Georgetown, uh, Vernon Dish, and just make it. Go make it. But you, you can make it in hell. <laughs> this is what we gotta really consider. We gotta keep it real with ourselves as we go forward. We need to make sure that we are we're the ones making that difference. We're chosen, a chosen royal priesthood. And the good news is this though, and then don't forget about the chart. Don't forget about the table because it is your life, it is your salvation, it is your eternal security. It's up to you to make that difference. So I mean, the good news is this though. We know that the devil has been sinning since the beginning. Anyone who continues to sin belongs to the devil. That's but here's the, here's the even good news. Though. The Son of God came for this to destroy the devil's works. Doom and gloom, you continue to sin, you belong to the devil, but the great part about it though is if you belong to God, you know, Jesus Christ came to destroy the devil's work. If you trust in Jesus Christ, just follow him, you'll be fine. 
So if someone's following me, of course, it's all y'all know. You've been following me for the past 15 years. Because you never follow me, like, go to hell. I don't know you. Sorry. This is, this is how it works out. But we know that we can do better, and that's exactly why we want to, first of all, encourage everyone to simply accept Jesus Christ. I mean, no, we, we, have, we kind of understand that people, oh, I'm a Christian already, but don't just accept Christ or accept Him, but accept His teaching to your heart. Accept that He is not going to lead you astray. Accept that when He tells you to say no, it's for your best interest. Except when he tells you to say yes, it's for your best interest. Because God is patient. And he wants everyone to fellowship with him in heaven. It's just that simple.